Well, I heard that some similar prohibitions had passed in Canada, Connecticut, and other areas. I'm sure you're aware of those. And people here seem to think everything worked fine. So what? I called colleagues um, just to find out how they were doing. The project manager of park and cemetery operations at the city of Hamilton, Ontario said, we are not fine. Our fields are slowly getting worse and worse to the point of no return. We tried all of the biocontrols, but with 4,000 acres, it was just too expensive. We overseed a lot, and our complete renovations are always sodded. All fields are irrigated, so it works, but if we want to host international play, um, our fields are not in good shape, but I can write to the minister six months in advance to get permission to use pesticides so they're in playable condition. Another example, the parks superintendent for the town of Glastonbury, Connecticut, really agreed with that. He said the cost of organic biocontrols for grubs and turf, the beneficial nematodes, the cost is prohibitively expensive for their thousands of acres, and it's not consistently available or consistently effective. The manager of park operations for the city of London, Ontario, told me that weed control in median planter boxes and horticulture displays in downtown public parks has suffered from the prohibited pesticide list. They need to weed all their ornamental displays by hand. Weeds are damaging the infrastructure. Curbs are deteriorating as the weed roots crack the concrete. And another park manager for the city of Brampton Parks Department said that the law has brought down the level of expectation. And I know, you know, some of this talk has been about changing our level of expectation of quality. Also, something that has happened is their pesticide sales dropped by 2.7%. He has observed that the weedy areas became compact and the soil dries out. And I, I'm on the stormwater management team, so I said, well, are you, are you getting some runoff with this now with the compact areas? And so when I asked him that, he said, no, he did not notice any runoff because enough invasive weeds have grown to cover these areas. Um, they were surprised to find, but the invasive species populations have shot through the roof since they can um, increase in these non-managed turf areas and then jump back into the, into the um, areas where it's legal to manage them. Parks have been completely overrun with weeds, and he sends 40 people out with string trimmers to knock down weeds every two weeks. The string trimmers have two cycle engines, and this, their emissions add pollutants. And then back in the US, the director of parks and recreation in Durango, Colorado, selected nine parks to manage organically. And it has been very labor intensive for them, and they've jumped in with more frequent aeration, top dressing, and overseeding. So they really put time and resources into it. The parents and the coaches in their soccer program began to voice their concerns with increasing weed populations. The users were worried about safety. Well, a city council member lived next to the field. Um, she watched it degrade and really physically went into the park and made an effort to help hand pull weeds. She saw that it looked horrible and looked sick. So this council member was the voice to pull it out of the organic program.